the research work um, has um, is basically approaching um, a standard problem in uh, lambing time um, where we dock lambs tails using a rubber ring. Now quite clearly this um, causes an element of distress for 20 to 30 minutes um, with, with the lambs. There isn't a sensible um, medical, standard medical treatment for it um, and if there was it would be expensive and time consuming. Um, so my approach was to say okay well let's try um, standard homeopathy, um, which we are told will will work. Um, so that I did, and after um, uh, one pilot study and now a, a full randomised control trial, uh, double blind, well actually triple blind technically, um, it's produced about a 30% reduction in the amount of pain and distress experienced by these little lambs. That has you might say, well, that's a very brief uh, effect. It's not very. Uh, it's not really uh, going to have any long-term impact. But it probably will do because um, if you, when um, disease sets in, um, particularly in in young lambs, when they are distressed for any reason at all, and if you can do things which cut down. Um, standard interventions which need to be done, such as the tail docking, such as uh, such as castration, then, and you can cut that distress down to a level which is which is much more manageable. You reduce the risk of other disease coming coming in and getting a hold. So um, that's basically the work that I did. I got into it um, because I was. Uh, I, I had read Goldacre and Singh and Ernst and I put them down and realised even without any technical uh, scientific experience at that stage that I was reading something which was incredibly superficial and it went against all of my, um, my experience on the farm with using homeopathy for other things, which um, on occasions will 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 actually um, will sometimes produce some remarkable results very very quickly. Other times, of course, it doesn't work. But then other times, um, conventional medicine doesn't work either. So um, you know you can't expect to win them all. Homeopathy doesn't provide. It's not a um, uh, not a panacea um, it's 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 there to be used and sometimes you have to use antibiotics um, or, or depending on on the, your, the development of your homeopathic ability uh, especially in the early days you have to use you have to use both but as you progress in your homeopathic expertise and experience um, you find that the the use of uh, conventional medication does drop how do you measure distress in lambs? Ah, right. Um, that is uh, a little bit more tricky. That's the tricky part of, of the RCT. Um, that involves recording every single movement that that lamb makes after you have climbed out of the pen, having put the ring on its tail. Um, there are, I have classified approximately 21 different movements, um, such as, um, oh, such as hunching or turning and looking at its tail, um, uh, ears back, going and sucking from its mother, which is always a, an initial state of, um, uh, the state of distress whenever a lamb is, is is put under any kind of stress at all the first thing it will do is go and have a suck from its mother so you know you have an indicator there um, uh, and then um, it finally it, it the, the the worst one is where they lie down and they thrash all four legs on a uh, on a regular basis 
Um, and it's fairly clear which of those kinds of movements are not uh, show show no signs of of difficulty. Those which show a lot of difficulty, and those that are somewhere in be somewhere in between. So I've developed a um, not only a, the classification of movement, but I've also developed um, the uh, the scoring system that goes with it. So you wind up with uh, watching a lamb for twenty minutes recording virtually every single movement it, it takes in a particular, in each minute. Um, and then you wind up with ultimately a spreadsheet um, on the computer in Excel um, with a lot of numbers on it. And then you analyse those numbers.